My wife is coming now. She's going to share. She's going to come in and bless you from whatever uh, uh, God had put on her heart and briefly, and then you'll hear more from her on Father's Day, and then I'm going to come back with the Word of God. She needs this mic. I guess she can use it. We ain't going to catch nothing in there. <laughs> We're not going to catch anything. Oh, a breath of fresh air. God bless everyone today. Hallelujah. You look great in the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Is anybody out there? Is anybody in the house? Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God is a good God. And I love him because he goes before us. Hallelujah. He called out the way. He knows the way that we take. So he goes before us. And I thank him for that. And, you know, as we were praying, I believe it was Tuesday morning. And uh, the Lord began, as I began to pray, the Lord began to put a warning in my spirit for the young people. And... He told me, he said, to warn the young people about the occult. It's a lot of things going on, and the devil is trying to make it look pretty so that he can ensnare our youth. But God wants to uncover and want the children of the believers to be wise and walk as children as light while it is day. Hallelujah. The first thing he said, beware, don't be enticed by your friends, your buddy, you know, your pals, your boyfriend or your girlfriend. He said, beware of these things that are happening and luring children, especially the children of the believers, into tarot card reading. Oh, playing with Ouija boards. Palm reading, <laughs> pornography, uh, horoscopes, hard rock music. Satan used these things to oppress children of believers. Also drugs. Don't let your buddies, your, your ace boom coon, entice you to trying it for one time. It only takes the devil one time to get in to destroy your life. And, you know, a lot of things, a lot of these influences happen because we suffer from insecurity, anger, rage, fear, um, unwantedness, uh, rebellion. All these things can happen to you, you know, but God has a remedy. And that's the word of God. Hearing the word of God. You come to the house of God. You're uh, seeing your parents in the word, praying. That's a pattern for you to protect you from these things and these influences. Anything you seek to control, to, you seek to control your life outside of Christ is occultish. Okay? If we try to find out about our future, to go to these mediums, it's very dangerous because they open your spirit up for demon possession. Amen. Don't let your children listen to everything that's on TV and, and the cartoons. They're full of occultism. And for right now, uh, I have some scriptures, but on Father's Day, I want to share those things. It goes right along with, you know, what we're sharing today. But it also uh, talks, is the Lord is one in the position and the place of the father in the home. And not only that, what the family structure should look like. Amen. And so, uh, on that note, children... Be alert, be watchful. There's not many children here today, but there's some young adults getting caught up because of their buddies, boyfriend, girlfriend thing. They're getting caught up in these things. 
you know, I had an aunt, she's younger than I am, and she had uh, a co-worker, and they all were going to the psychic to get a reading, and they gave her a, a, gave it to her as a gift, and she not being in church like she should have been, because she grew up in church, she went along with it. It seemed innocent, a fun thing to do. But I'll tell you, it brings on bondage. So be aware, saints, that tarot card reading, and uh, it comes under the disguise of divination, okay? And I want to read what divination is so we won't be ignorant of Satan devices, right? My people perish because of lack of, amen, and we are not going to be ignorant. Things that Satan is using to get people all caught up in foolishness and um, divination. What would be known today as a new age psychic movement, divination is an institution of retrieving and exchanging spiritual information that reports on people's futures, mostly their fortunes and tragedies from different objects. Types of divination are tarot card reading, divining rod, water flows and puddles, tea leaf readings, lots casting uh, or sorting, augury, astrology, liver and entrail readings, um, palm reading, um, oracles, numerology, uh, talismans, generally the su uh, suffix mancy on the end of a word indicates that it is a form of divination. Likewise, mantic as a suffix is to stem from the root of divination. That means prayer, spiritual manipulation, and probably sacrifice and oblation drink offerings originally played a great role in the success of, act, of the activity or event associated with the word. Divination invariably relies on objects, inanimate or not, for its information. For example, the tarot card or horoscopes, so you people read into it every day to see what the horoscopes say that their day going to be like, their month, their year, their life is going to be like, and it's according to your birthday. And, but if you put your interest in that, it'll bring bondage. Amen. Because we are moved, we live and move and have our being through who? The Holy Spirit. Amen. And Jesus. He is the Holy Spirit. This type of spiritual inquisition is tied to nature worship and resorts to natural elements to retrieve its spiritual data. And then there's uh, magic, divination by lots. There's a human thuman that the Bible used in the old days where people wanted to know what uh, they should do and they would have this human and thuman and, and they would, whatever it said, if it said yes or no, then that's what they believe. But God give us more insight and depth now that we are new believers in the kingdom, you know, to just short-term yes and no. Should I do this, Lord? You know, and um, sometimes the Holy Spirit will tell us yes, sometimes he tells us no, sometimes he tells us wait on him, you know, but we're dependent upon the Holy Spirit and not on an uh, object. And so that's the whole point. Let's not, let's not be ignorant of the devices. God is warning the young people because this is the age we're living in. Everything is out there. There's some of everything. And people see it as entertainment. Some people see it as trying to find a direction for their life. But this is the direction for our life. This right here. Amen. God bless you.
Praise the Lord. Well, we want to, want to thank the Lord for his, his goodness. Uh, I'm going to be talking about healing today. And a couple of things I want to say beforehand. <clears throat> the Bible from Genesis to Revelation has quite a bit to say about healing. It's... Uh, because God is a healer. Ever since man fell, there's healing for him. And even before he fell, in the garden, there was a tree um, of life. And the, the trees that were there were to bring healing on a constant basis to man's body and soul. That was in the garden. And if you have read Revelation, you find that that garden, there's a restoration in that garden, and it tells there are 12 men of fruit for the healing of the nations. So healing has been and is uh, constant. Wherever you find mankind, uh, God, you'll find the need for healing. And he says, different scriptures, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Who he, he talks about him who forgives all of our iniquities, who heals all of our diseases, and that's in the Old Testament. So healing has been around. Isaiah and other scriptures, Jeremiah 8 talks about, uh, is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? And Gilead was a place that had the reputation of being a place of hope because of the balm that was sold, in, and the balm had the healing qualities. And it was big in Gilead, and so when Jeremiah made the statement, is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no physician there? It's the whole point was, if there's no healing in Gilead, there's no healing anywhere. And then he talks, and some of it, uh, when he was lamenting and so on, it pointed to Calvary, God's, Christ's love for humanity. So he had such a great, great love for us, for humanity. And I want you to think about God who just wants us whole. He wants us well uh, because a person that's whole and well, they function to maximum capacity it's co according to the will and purposes of God, right? There was a man in Gadara that uh, he could not function in life. He was in the graveyards. At night he was cutting himself with stones, crying out, he was not in the mainstream of society because of his need. And then Jesus came and met him, and he healed him of everything that was wrong with him. He goes back to his family. His family sees him, total different person, sound in his right mind, no longer naked, but clothed because of Jesus. Jesus gave him total healing. And that's what he does for us. First, he wants to save us if we're not saved. Get us in the ark of safety, right? And the ark in the old days was a symbol of Jesus Christ. And all the ones that were saved were eight. And uh, it just points out the scarcity of those that will be saved in comparison to the total population of humanity over the years. And Jesus said the same thing. He said, Few there be that will find this way of life. But the road that leads to destruction is very broad. 85 and 90 percent of the people just follow the broad way because they think it's the fun way, the right way. But, um, but the narrow way is for the ones that find God and find the light. So today, I want to talk about healing from abuse of mothers. This is what the Lord put on my, he spoke to me as late as yesterday. I'd be seeking him starting Monday, what he has in mind, and sometime he'll wait till the last minute. I can't do anything about it because I'm spending my time before him and in the word. But there's sometimes he'll wait till Friday or Saturday. Sometimes if he wants me to dig a lot, he'll give it to me very early. And I know he wants me to dig. Uh, but mostly, 
it's like a reiteration of things that he's already spoken to us. And so this was Saturday. We were riding, headed down to Virginia Beach, and the Lord began to speak to me. He said to talk about healing from abuse of mothers. Now, what I would want you to know is, before I go further, is the target is not mothers here today. That's not the target. The target is the abused. That could be mothers, it could be fathers, it could be children. Did y'all get that? The target is not mothers. That's not what I'm targeting. When I say I'm targeting, uh, if there are mothers in here, when you hear the word, you will say, oh God, you may find something in that that you can relate to. That's fine and dandy. But the target is not uh speaking to mothers about how they are. The target is the abused. Those that have been abused as a result of mother's abuse. Am I making sense? All right, so mothers, uh, mother's Day is coming and there's a delightful message that you'll be hearing, all right? <laughs> Today, he told me to talk about being healed from the abuse of mothers. So that could be your grandmother. It could be, you could be a mother here and is 60 or 70 years old and you are a victim and God wants to heal you. All right? So it's, I'm not targeting uh, the mothers here to say you were abusers. That's not what I'm trying to say. God wants to heal people. And if you fall into that category, then God is saying, I have seen your sorrows, I've seen your pain of these years, I've seen, I've seen what's holding you back, I've seen all of that all these years, but I want you to know that I want to heal that root so that you can function to greater capacity, whether it be love, whether it be trust, whatever it may be. But when healing comes, it helps us. It mends the wounds. It soothes the pain. Memories are healed. Painful memories are healed. And, and concepts are changed. Ways of thinking are changed when healing comes. Healing is very vital. And um, in the book of Corinthians, the Lord, the Bible says God has uh, set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, and then evangelists, workers of miracles. Then he said gifts of healing. So that means God has set in the church gifts as it pleases him, right? So we, if we being the recipients of the gifts, we don't have, we cannot say, okay, God, I think I'd rather be a, um, I think I'd rather be uh, an evangelist, you know, because that's kind of glamorous. I, I, I like that better. We don't have that option. God chooses as he will. Isn't that right? Come on, give him some praise. He's worthy. My God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I remember when I was wrestling with healing, 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 healing. I was like, okay, man, I want to. Do this, I don't want to do that. I want to just go and run revival. I just want to enjoy it. You know, I just wanted to do like I saw my former pastor do. That was just my thing. And I enjoyed it. You go come in, we ride into town and been on the road all day. We get to the city and get in there and he ain't talked to nobody. And, and uh, boy, he, and God just healed and set people free. I loved that. I was like, God, that's what I want to do. And so I set out when I first got started in the pastorate. I'm saying, God, give me open doors. I want to run some revival. <laughs> the Lord said, I don't want you to do that now. So now I'm having to learn what he wants rather than what I wanted so bad, right? And so that's the way life goes. And uh, sometimes if you want something so bad, and you, you know, God may not want you to have that. He may have something else better. But now that I'm where I am, Healing is better. Amen. That's better. Yes. I feel more fulfilled. And I see the hand of God. It's so gracious. It's so powerful, you know? 
But there I wanted to go another route. I remember, and I don't know why I'm sharing this, but it must be a purpose. I remember saying to the Lord, you know what, I'll just give this church up. That was a long time ago, so it wasn't, it wasn't recent. <laughs> now don't y'all go figuring in your mind. This was years ago, all right? So I didn't expect him to respond. I was just kind of trying to let him know I was a little frustrated. But And you know what the Lord said? He waited a bit, and then he says, if you do, you're going to miss a very important part of your life. So I thought, well, I didn't expect him to take me that serious. I was just frustrated, you know. But God takes serious when we say things. Are you hearing me? Yeah, because in our frustration, we can say things that is full of the wrong kind of faith, you know. And uh, so anyway, back to the healing of, from abuse of mothers. You may have had a mother that fall into one of these categories. There's eight categories here. And some of them seem like they kind of overlap. But don't worry about that. Just try to get the gist of what I'm saying. The first mother. He mentioned mothers that did not respect themselves. They do damage to their children, sons and daughters. Mothers that did not respect themselves. They were loose and undisciplined. Some of them kind of went from men to men. And sometimes the children saw the behavior of their mom, and then when they grew older, they were pained and humiliated because they know what a, they have an idea what a, a good mother is supposed to be like. I've talked to people that have had things like that to say, and I cannot share what was said, although these people are not here, but I cannot share because I don't know how far this message may go. But the point that I'm making is uh, this person saw his mom in a very humiliating condition. She was sloppy drunk, exposed. And he could not shake that memory. 20, 30, 40 years later, he could not shake that memory. In and out of jail. It gets very serious. But it started with the mother. His significant other. There are many stories like that. But I just want to make the point. The Lord said... Some are victims of mothers that did not respect themselves. And so the children have hurts, and especially the sons, they are humiliated. Second category of mothers is mothers that did not respect the children's father. Maybe he was a rascal, maybe he was domineering, abusive. Uh, maybe he abandoned the mother. Whatever it was, the mother took it out on the child. Or it could have been a situation where mothers put the fathers down or the children's father down by saying bad, negative things about them. How many know you cannot help a child when you put their biological father down? That's who they are. And, uh, but some are victims of that kind of abuse. And God wants to heal. If there's someone here that fits that category. God is saying, I know how it hurt you. 
I know the pain that it's caused you. And I want to help. He's saying, I'm the balm of Gilead that make wounded hearts whole. The third category he mentioned was mothers that are angry. They abuse their children. Angry for whatever reason. It could be an abusive father, an abusive mother. Could have been uh, just traumas in life as a child and growing up. Whatever. But mothers that are angry, they can be hard on their children. And uh, as I said, some of these categories may overlap, but I'm the, the, the ones... Just remember the heading. Uh, there are mothers that did not respect themselves. That was the key purpose or the key function or the key uh, malady. The second one was mothers that didn't respect their children's fathers. That, that was the problem. They were either angry and upset with the fathers, the children's father, and so they took it out on the children. So ch children uh, caught up in the abuse the third one I mentioned was mothers that are just angry. Anger can come for different reasons, but they become hard on their children. Uh, but the issues in the heart are issues that God alone can heal. And he specializes in things that are impossible with mankind. Man can't do it, but God can. Hallelujah. The fourth category is mothers that have been abused sexually. Spirits of trauma can enter, move in, creating an opening door. I mean, spirits of trauma such as spirits of fear, spirits of sin, spirits of anger or hate. And those spirits can move in and cause the person to do, be like they are, those spirits. And if they aren't careful, they can mistreat. Their children, uh, they can be either overprotective, child can be in a certain form of bondage. A lot of things can come out of uh, those mothers that have been sexually abused. Now, this is not cross the border and it happened that way with everybody. That's not what I'm saying, but I'm just giving the category that God gave me. So if we are victims of such, then we can open our hearts and say, God, I think that pertains to me. I think that's how I feel. And uh, so you allow the Lord to heal. Um, I, rem I remember um, talking to the Lord because off and on through the years, he would have me speaking about healing from uh, abuse of men, he healing from abuse of women. And so I got to thinking one day, I said, Lord, um, which one of those areas um, the need is greater? Because I've over the years I've had this, you've given it to me over and over, over the years. Not not every Sunday, but just off and on. And he said, the abuse of mothers. And I was shocked because I just knew it was healing from abuse of men. But he said, healing from abuse of mothers is the greater is greater. In other words, there's more damage been done than the healing from the abuse of men. And uh, now I'm, I'm talking about our fellowship, okay? I'm not talking about the world, but because uh, I was asking and concerned our fellowship. I remember preaching down in uh, Yorktown or somewhere in the area down there. And as I was preaching about healing, there was a certain person that came up. Before I could finish the altar call, they were that close to me. When I happened to open my eyes, it shocked me because they was right there on me. But what had happened is they had been driven up by the Spirit of God. And they were not even conscious of how close they were standing. They were totally, totally captured by the Spirit. And he drove. Sometimes the Spirit will drive. I don't know if some of you have experienced that, but I have. I've experienced when the Holy Spirit drives. And so I understood when the Bible says about Jesus and the Spirit of God drove him into the wilderness. He literally drove you. I remember uh, one instance that we were having a prayer breakfast and I was saying something and 
uh, I, I was talking about something and the Spirit of God just literally drove me. I was just like that, but he was pushing me. In, inside of me, he was driving me. And then I understood. So that's real. The Spirit can drive people. And, um, but this lady had been, she was, God was so talking to her during the message that before I could finish the altar call, he drove her up and she was just there totally. And when I opened my eyes, she was so close to me. I was like, whoa. But she was not, she meant no harm. She was not, she was so captivated by the fact that the Holy Spirit went so deep into the air of her life. And he drove her to the altar. It's a work by the Spirit, saints. The Spirit of God can heal us. And uh, I just really want you to, uh, to, to, to grasp this because the real function of this little branch of Zion is healing and restoration. And the anointing that's on the ministry has everything to do with healing broken hearts. It is God's dynamic deed by his spirit. And uh, so I'm well aware of that. I am well aware of that because uh, only healing comes from God. So um, uh, God bless you, Mario. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I just wanted to pause when my grandson came in. Praise the Lord. All right. So number, are we on number five? Okay. Uh, number five, healing for mothers who are selfish and self-centered. And I know that even mothers today, if you hear you say, I am not like that, you know, but there are some mothers that are. Sometimes mothers leave their children because they are selfish. They want the finer things in life or they want this person or they want this and so they leave their children. And God said he wanted to heal people from mothers that's been self-centered and selfish. You may be a victim here you may be, you may see just one of those areas that, ah, that's where, well, that's just, the Holy Spirit breaks bread according to what we need, right? Now, you, this, all of these needs will not fit everybody, but I'm just sharing what he shared, trying to take my time because it's critical. When God wants to heal somebody, that's what I want to do. Because I found out if I agree with God, I get kingdom results. Isn't that right? Hallelujah, I don't know how to pastor. I try to follow God. And if I follow him, we're going to get there, right? We may get there slow, but we're going to get there. Isn't that right? <laughs> I remember one time talking to the Lord years ago, uh, a sister that's in the ministry now. She said, Pastor, the Lord said, you're moving. You may be moving slow, but you're moving. And she added this. This is what blessed me. She said, God said, it's better to be going somewhere slow than to be going nowhere fast. <laughs> I said, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know. <laughs> and that, and, but a few years ago, the Lord told me, he said, he said this. He said, there are a lot of people uh, exalting themselves. But the last line, what he said is, which is amounting to nothing. I was like, whoa, Jesus, don't let me try that, you know. We don't want to be spinning our wheels. It's only when God exalts, oh my God, hallelujah, Jesus, glory, 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 glory. Hmm. No matter how long it takes, if he doesn't lift you up, you can't be lifted up. Isn't that right? You can try a lot of things and it goes... But when God 
Somehow I know I needed to say that. I don't know. But when God pick you up, there's not a human kind that can put you down. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh my God. God's good. God is good. Amen. All right. Number six. Healing for mothers that are domineering, he said. Domineering and critical. Mothers that are, have been controlling and always want things to go their way, have to, want to have things done their way. Their children will grow up sometimes fearful, indecisive, afraid to make decisions and a whole lot of other things. But he said, healing from mothers that are domineering and critical. That's number six. I heard my story is told of a young man that I met years ago. His mother, he walked to school and his mother made him wear a red coat. It's a young, he was a young fella. And uh, he said, he must have been preteen, I think it was, very conscious of himself and his peers. God sent him to school with a red coat. And he was so embarrassed. So he walked to school, and so she sent him out, and he was going to try to take that coat off before he got. But he says she stood in the door until he went inside with that red coat. And so we had an occasion to talk with him, pray with him. And the Holy Spirit brought up that red coat, and he was devastated. And I asked him why, and he began to tell what had happened to him. Life is such that we need memories to be healed because they fix us in a mode of operation that could be contrary to God's way. Ah, Jesus, my God. All right, the sixth and the seventh. Mothers that never bonded with their children. Child can be left in the incubator, or left in the hospital, or away from their mother for whatever cause, or raised by another uh, person, or raised by an aunt, or raised by uh, grandmother raised by anyone other than the mother and so they did not bond the mother the son the mother the daughter they didn't bond so there's this strangeness they they can't figure out why they 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 they, they, they there's just something there they can't make the connection and the problem was the mother never bonded with him so God can heal the bond. I remember 30, about 33 or 4 or 5 years ago, we were praying, we were in a service. Before I even understood much about healing, and God spoke concerning a man that he had an unhealthy bond with his big sister. And she was domineering. She governed his life. He was a little boy, small in stature, and he grew up. And even after he was grown in many years, that unhealthy bond hung over him so he could not be free and function as a man. And one day, God spoke to that bond, that unhealthy bond, broke that unhealthy tie and the person was floored at the almighty that could do such things what am I doing I am exalting him he can do anything yeah. no matter what your life was like yeah. Jesus can change it yeah. he can meet your need and then the last 
mother that he mentioned was, and I said these things sometimes, it seems like they can overlap, mothers that neglect and abandon their children can kind of overlap with, with selfishness. But mothers that neglect and abandon their children and uh, sometimes they don't take care of the child, send the child to school looking any kind of way, won't comb their hair, won't, or won't make them take a bath and won't iron their clothes, won't give them clean or neat clothes. And, and so the children become the victim of abuse from other children in school. And uh, there are other ways where mothers may neglect or abandon their children and uh, they're teased by others. Other ways are orphans, when little orphans where mothers abandon them or mothers on drugs, mothers incarcerated. And so the children suffer. They suffer. So God said he wanted to heal from abuse of mothers. You may be here and say, well, none of those categories fit me. Pray, pray for the others, right? You may be here and says, ah, one of those areas did fit me. We're not here to try to say, you got to fit this area. That's not what we're doing. I'm delivering what the Lord said. He said, I want to heal from abuse of mothers. So I've done, I've spoken and given the categories. And now will you pray with me? Father, in Jesus' name, you are a very wise God. I've learned a long time ago, if we follow you, we get your results. You said in your word, apart from me, you can do nothing. I acknowledge it. But then you said, with God all things are possible. I thank you, Lord. I don't know whether it's one, two, or three, or four, but Lord, I share this word from you about children, whether they're middle-aged children who may be seniors, children, but children, nevertheless, that were victims of abuse by their mothers. Whoever they are, I ask that you would begin ministering your love to them now. George is coming to the piano and, and as we now just pray unto God for his healing love, we ask that you would allow him to, if he if he brings up anything that you, it's clear, you know it's God, you, you, you know it's God, then do not, I repeat, do not reason it away and do not say, well, I'll talk to him when I get home. Don't do that. If God brings it up, it's in this atmosphere under this presence of God that he wants to minister to you now. You say, but no, 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 I can't do that now because somebody might think this about this. No, it's not about that. It's about responding to the presence of the Holy Spirit. Jesus loves us today. I was riding from our vacation. We had had such a wonderful time a couple of weeks ago. Just plain wonderful. The, scen the, the, the scenic views, the mountains, Everything was so beautiful and we uh, had time together and activities and, we, and so we were coming back home and before we got halfway home I was playing the CD and Shirley Caesar was singing He'll give you peace in the midst of a storm I'd heard her sing it before but this time this time God chose to heal me and I'm going to share this because I want you to see how real God is and how
We don't get too big and too old to have memories healed. Uh, I was, when Betty was her last, on her last few weeks and months here in the hospital, something had happened and whatever they gave her, she had swollen so much larger than her regular size. So I went there, but before that had happened, I was there at church, over there at the FOE place. And this mother, Pastor Apostle Elizabeth Ray, she came to have service with us that day. And on the way out the door, I was standing greeting people and she said, Apostle, God said, the storm is passing over. I felt the presence of God, the witness of the Spirit, and I thanked her. So I'm excited, wow, because we were going through then. I was excited because God said the storm is passing over. Only to discover when I got home and went to see Betty at this time. They had left her halfway exposed and she had swollen much larger. And I, when I saw that, I was so devastated. I didn't have words to say. I didn't even know how to even pray. I was so angry. But needless to say, I left home I mean, left there after a while, talked with the nurses and doctors, went home, fell on my face to God. God, what is it? Why on earth is this happening? And I remember he didn't answer me. I don't know if he did. I don't remember what he said. Anyway, long story short, I went to bed. I woke up. Next morning, and I headed back over there again to see her. And when I got over there, everything had returned to normal. Everything. So when Shirley Caesar was singing that song, the Holy Spirit took me back to that moment. And so I'm driving. We had a good time. And I could feel the spirit wanted to go there with me and I didn't want him to go there because I didn't want my wife and Jessica to see me breaking down driving so I fought it for a moment and I had to make a decision am I going to let God heal me and I know that he wants to heal that memory so finally I yielded over Wanda is very sensitive. She knew that something was going on, so she didn't say a word. She, she reached over to him and just grabbed my hand. And then the floodgates went on open. God healed me. I cannot... I don't know enough but when God wants to heal me then I've got to yield and let him have his way hallelujah hallelujah Jesus somebody today God spoke to you through the word I'm going to back up there and go back up there for a moment and I'm going to ask all of us to stand. And I want you to do what the Holy Spirit spoke to you. Because if he can't persuade you, neither can I.